Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds, and today I'm going to show you how I built this heavy duty cedar tone planter box. So a little while back, I made a planter box out of cedar fencing, which was great and it looks really good, but now I want to build something that's a little bit longer. I can do vegetables in it, I can do flowers in it. So today, I'm going to be using these cedar tone pressure treated decking boards. These are going to be a lot more structural than what my cedar fencing was because I'm going to be doing a 48 inch long box. So I want it to be really strong because it's going to be holding a lot of dirt. Now this build is going to be super simple. So if you're totally new to woodworking, this is going to be the video for you. So let's get started. Like all woodworking projects, I'm starting off with turning long boards into shorter ones. If you want to know how short though, check out my free plans down in the description. All right, so I got all my pieces cut out and I wanted to lay them out so I could see how they're gonna look once they're all fully assembled. And right now with these rounds on the corners, they look a little rustic, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think they'd actually look really cool once they're fully assembled, but I'm not really going for rustic for this. I wanna do something that's a little bit more modern and upscale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these boards, run them through my table saw, cut off these rounds on either edge, that way they'll sit super flush. Now, let's go do that. All right, so I got all my boards trimmed up so they're nice and flush and looking good. I also went ahead and cut up some old pressure treated board I have down to an inch and a half by an inch and a half. These are gonna be my supports so I can mount all these boards together now some of you might be thinking, hey, these are two different colors. That might throw off the image. Well, these are gonna be actually on the inside of my box, so they're not gonna be seen, especially once there's dirt in here. Now, let's get started. I'm mounting my braces using two and a quarter inch construction screws. Now I don't want these screws to be seen on the outside of the box, so I'm screwing them in from what would be the inside. I'm using my 90 degree positioning clamp and brad nail gun to get everything in place and square. And then once I have all of that in place, I'm gonna go around with screws and really lock it down. All right, we've got ourselves a box. It's looking super good, really happy with how it's turning out. You can see how wet my wood is because all my screws have left wet marks literally everywhere, but that's okay, it's working well. So we're moving on to putting a bottom piece. So I'm gonna cut out individual pieces that are gonna go along like this and I'm gonna pocket hole them into the sides. Let's keep going. Time to shorten more boards. All right, so I got all my bottom pieces all cut out. Now when I put these in, I need to space them equally, which means I'll have about an eighth of inch gap in between each of them. 
And once these dry out, that gap's gonna get even bigger so they'll drain well. Now next, I'm gonna be drilling some pocket holes on all of these, and I'm gonna be doing three on each side of each board. That way I can have a lot of strength because this is gonna be holding a lot of dirt and I want these to be as rock solid as I can get. Now, let's keep going. Before I drill the pocket holes, I'm notching four of the bottom boards to fit around the supports. I'm using paint stirring sticks as my spacers in between each board. Now I had a bit of an issue with them falling through while I was adjusting, but I figured out that if I just drill a hole through my stick and use a toothpick, it holds it in place really well. All right, I've got the bottom all installed, which means that this is officially a box. Now, we're moving on to putting some legs on. I'm gonna be using the same decking that I did before. I'll be trimming off the rounds again, and I'll have them mounted on the outside, and then it's gonna overlap like this, so it'll be nice and sturdy. Now, before we start cutting out those legs, please hit the subscribe button for me. You'll be able to stay up to date on all my videos, and it helps me out a ton. So thank you for doing that. Now, let's keep going. I'm cutting one board five inches wide and the other one four inches wide. That way when they overlap at the corner, they'll be symmetrical. I want all my screws to be in a very specific pattern, so I'm pre-drilling all the holes onto a single leg and then I'm gonna use that as a template so all the legs have the same pattern. I'm mounting the four inch board first and then I'm overlapping it with the five inch board after. I want this planter box to have a more modern industrial look so I'm using some black headed roofing screws. Also, I'm making sure to pre-drill all my holes first to prevent splitting. my wood was so wet I was a little concerned about warping so I cut some triangles to use as braces and then glued them and brad nailed them in place. Now we're moving on to mounting up the top. I'm going to be using the same boards. I'm going to put miters on each end and I'm going to mount them all up using these same screws. Let's keep going. I laid out all my top boards and then traced the underside so I could find the center of the walls. From there, I flipped the boards over and used my lines to mark where I wanted to pre-drill all the screw locations.
All right, top is on the planter box. It's looking super good. This thing is done. It is ready to go and be a planter. Now I just have one more thing I wanna do is I'm gonna put a mesh on the bottom and then a weed barrier all the way around. That way, when I put dirt in here, it's not gonna fall through any of these cracks, but it's still gonna let some water through. So let's get this put in and then beauty shots. All right, the planter box is done. It looks super good, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Now, as always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my future projects. If you enjoyed this video at all, hit the like button. It helps me out a ton, and I really appreciate it. And leave a comment. I love reading them. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.